<laughs> he dove into Lawrence and Arabia with a gasp and a sigh. He needed some water. The book was so dry. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction to the It's Um Corbin. Oh, Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Mark Jensen, they got that! It's so cute. Thanks for some Patreon followers. Try to bell over on the Nike Squad. Follow us on our person YouTube channels. Links in the description below. Today we're reacting to a uh, fight scene. No. Oh. This is called What is Rog? That's cool. Yeah. So this is a video. Uh, ex this is explaining. Ex explaining Rog. Cool. To us. So um, here, read this for me. Good night. Nice paragraph. The video is about classical music, mm. explained very nicely by a classically trained artist. It explains what a Rog is. You've reacted to many Darbar videos, and I have heard your comments about how a performer saying random words. Well, guess what? They're not random at all. Rahat Fatih Ali Khan, for example, does this really well. Mm -hmm. You've reacted to his Coke Studio songs and have yep. noticed how he plays with notes. These yep. notes are equivalent to Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol. Lots of explain it in a Western context. Indian classical, Hindustani, Carnatic, etc. take these notes that are called Sargam. Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Ni, Sa. I'm sure I mispronounced those. In ascending and descending order. To make a rag, an artist can sing these notes in various permutations and combination to form a rag. So, like they did in, uh, I'll, I'll, rag simply means hue or color. And if you ask me, music is nothing but a form of color which you can hear. Cool. Beautifully expressed and, and, and explained. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so in that song from The Sound of Music, she basically does with Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, mm -hmm. what they do in a rag, where they take what their notes are and they mix them around because when you listen to that song, she says you can mix them up so do la fa mi do re, and they mix them all up. And I'm guessing that's exactly what the description was: is they take those things and just move them around to make completely different uh, intervals. So it's it's about time for us to actually learn, since we react to so much classical. All the time. Um, so this is exciting. And thank you for that description. That was a magnificent description. Here we go. <laughs> Well, this was an attempt of mine in singing Rag Bhairav. Uh, many of you all might be having this doubt. What exactly is a Rag? Hmm, why don't we take this up today? Well, then welcome to this episode of the Basic Theory like of Indian Music with right me, Anandra People who are watching this episode today Many of you all might be acquainted to Indian classical music. We are. Many might not be. But I'm sure that each and every one of you all must have heard this term rag at least once in their lifetime. Well, this term of rag is very unique to Indian classical music and it forms its backbone. In Hindustani, it is called as rag. In Carnatic, it is called as ragam. And many people also call it raga which is actually an anglicized version of the term rag but it all boils down to or it all means the same thing now coming back to the question what is rag well in the simplest terms rag means a melody which is used to express a feeling now you will ask what is a melody melody is a ear pleasing combination of musical notes Good description. but mind you that a rag is not a very random combination or a random melody to understand the concept of rag, you will have to understand the three layers which form a rag or the three steps in the formation of a rag. The first step is understanding that rag is a set of notes arranged in an ascending and a descending order. The ascending order is called as aroha, while the descending order is called as abroha. 
there have to be minimum five nodes in the ascending and five in the descending. The number of nodes in a raag determine what we call as the jati of the raag. Mm. So if there are five nodes in the ascending and five in the descending, the raag is what we call as odav odav jati raag. Odav means five. The example of odav odav jati raag is uh, the raag bhup, which has five nodes in ascending, five in descending. Sare gapadhasa, all original nodes. Sare gapadhasa. This forms the set of Rag Bhup. If there are six nodes in the ascending and six in descending, it is called as Shadav Shadav Jati Rag. And if there are seven nodes in the ascending and descending, then it is called as Sampurna Sampurna or uh, just Sampurna Jati Rag. Now, interestingly, there are some Rags which have a mixed Jati. Like they have five nodes in ascending and seven nodes while descending. So it's called as Odav Sampurna Jati Rag. And similarly, many have five notes while ascending and uh, six notes while descending, making it Odav Shadav Jati Rag, and so on and so forth. A rag is formed by the combination of um, the notes in this set. And while singing one rag, you cannot use the notes beyond this set. You have to use only the notes from this set. If you use something, which is not in this set, then you will uh, be breaking the rules of the rag, which is not at all acceptable. <laughs> now comes step number two. The second step is knowing that every rag has a chalan or there are rules uh, when it comes to combination of notes. Mm. For Western music students, this is exactly the difference between the Western concept of scale or mode mm. and the Indian concept of rag. When it comes to a scale or mode, you can have uh, the combination of any note with any note in the set. While in rag, you can't combine randomly. There are specific rules and at the same time, there are key phrases or uh, key combination of notes that one has to use. One cannot omit because these phrases or combination of musical notes give rag its identity. Now to take an example of the second step, Let's take the uh, Sampurna Jati Rag of Yaman, which has, because it is Sampurna, it has the seven notes. But instead of taking the original positioned Ma, we are taking the variant of Ma, which is Tibra Ma. So the set sounds something like this. or elaborating rag Yaman, your teacher will tell you that Yaman does not really take the phrase Sare Ga. Instead, the phrase Nire Ga forms uh, the identity of Yaman. So instead of taking Sare Ga Ma Pa, you take Nire Ga Ma Pa. Ha. One more such key phrase which gives Yaman its identity is the combination of the notes Pa and Re. So it's something like this. Nice. Wow. The third rule of Yaman is uh, probably that while you are um, ascending and you are going beyond Pa, you are not supposed to take the note Pa. You are supposed to omit Pa. So you can't sing it in this manner. Wrong. It should be And by descending, of course, you can take all the seven notes. So That's Yaman. Now this concept of Chalan in the rag is very interesting because you know you can have two rags with the same set of notes but the Chalan of each rag is different and that gives um, the flavor to the rag and mm. distinguishes one rag from mm. the other. For example, let's take the rags Rag Marwa and Rag Sohni. They have exactly the same notes, six notes in ascending and six in descending but the Chalan is different. The set of notes sounds something like this. Beautiful. 
but when you're singing marwa your teacher will tell you to rest on re and dha more so it sounds like this rag marwa sa ga ni re ga ma ra because of the rest on re and dha you see how the rag got a very contemplative feeling it's as if a man is thinking about the meaning of life and thinking about uh, deep philosophy at the same time with the same set of notes you can create rag suhani which is a chanchal rag which is a little restless rag which sounds something like this gavadani sa So when you listen to Rag Suni, you will never think of a man who is contemplating about life. Instead, you will think of a, a person who is a little zestful, say, a little bit angry, irritated, on a and is on his toes always. So that is how the challan is very important, and it gives the flavor to every rag and makes the rags distinct, even if they have the same notes. Mm. Okay, now that I know about uh, step one and step two, let me try singing rag Yaman for you. I will sing the set of notes in Yaman, and uh, definitely I'll combine the notes using the rules of the rag. Okay, rag Yaman. Nere ga, gare sa. Nere ga ma pa re sa, ga ma dha ni dha pa, ga ma dha ni sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa. But still, it didn't sound like rag yaman. Why? I had the same set of notes. I used the rules of combining, but. Why didn't it sound like rag yaman? Well, at this point, the third step is very important. A rag is not complete without the use of specific ornamentation in the rag. In classical singing, in the singing of rag, um, the ornamentation like of kanswar is very important. Now, the notes in um, a rag are not taken plainly. Mm -hmm. They have kana. or the touch of other surrounding notes and that is what gives the beauty to the note now for example i will not sing um, rag yaman plainly mere ga ma pa re sa this becomes very plain but using the kana swar it becomes mere ga ma pa re sa what did i do ni I actually gave the touch of ga to re. Ni ga re ga ma pa ma re sa. So while I'm, I was singing pa re, I was actually taking the notes in between also. Pa re sa. So these kana swar or the shadow notes or the notes that you just touch, they are not pronounced. You just touch them and say a hi, a little bit hi, and come back. So that is the intricacy of singing a rag yeah, the minute detail in the minute notes you eastern and western that increases the beauty of rag and gives it its structure just like uh, how the human body is made up of layers like the layer of uh, bones layer of muscles and tissues and then the layer of skin and then only it becomes a human body similarly a rag is also formed of three layers as we saw the layer of the set of notes then to add on it the layer of chalan and the layer of ornaments these elements together combined together interacting with each other will give you a rag i hope this episode was informative enough and all the doubts that you had regarding the concept of rag have been clarified well if you found this episode interesting then please do like the video share the video and subscribe to my channel that's all for today's episode i will love to see you in my coming episodes till then Take care and peace be with you. She's delightful. She was great. Absolutely. I feel like lovely. I just went to like a, like a college course on, on yeah, the, uh, yeah, it was magnificent. Very well explained for 
an idiot like myself, uh, who knows nothing of Western or Eastern music outside of this, it, it seems like, like, you think there was a lot of, um, that you'd think that Eastern music, just by hearing it, doesn't have a lot of rules. Because it sounds it's right. so random. It sounds so fluid and random. Yeah, it sounds right. like they're just coming out. It's like just... And, and as we've learned from Zakir saying, and it, there is some improvising. Right. But there's still the structured rules, which is right. why I think a lot of them from childhood, it's like a strict, this is what they're training to do with their guru right. or something like that. It's, but it was very well explained for uh, to somebody like me who has no idea of Eastern or Western. I, I felt like, I, I feel like I understand That's what wonderful. we listen to more. Yeah, because I was going to ask you what that was like for you and yeah. if it was something that made you feel lost or if it was something that made you feel, because I can't. Well, I'm still lost, obviously. But... No, I know, but for, the, for it's good to know that it came across that way because yeah. for me, who has a background with, some, with, with music, mm -hmm. There were things that I already come from a vantage point where I could understand what she was saying that you, you're, don't, you're not privy to. Mm -hmm. And that just speaks all the more about how good she was at communicating yeah. that. Yeah, she, was. she was fantastic in that communication. Yeah. And I, I again, I did had no, I knew there was structure. Yeah. Did not know it had the three layer aspect to it. I knew ornamentation was in there, but I didn't know what it was called, nor did I know how they apply it. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. The, um, it's not just the modality of the music, which is a term for, for it has to do with the circle of fifths and the, the, the notes that are used or not used in Western versus Eastern music, but even our instrumentation, because the majority of our music is, for, is written keyboard, again, you know, harps, accords, and then pianos, as well as uh, fretted instruments like guitars which really don't give a lot of wiggle room for the in-betweens. Like she said, I love the way she described that, that it goes in between and just kind of says hello, and, you know, gives a little touch, a little kiss to the note that's in between there, that in our music, we only get to it if a soloist bends on an electric guitar or a saxophonist bends or a, a violinist does some type of a bend. For the most part, we stick within those particular quarters, you know, court, not quarter note, but half steps between music, whereas Indian music, and you're right, it sounds so free-flowing, but the exact opposite is true. It's, it's, mm. it's quite um, structured. Yeah. It's, and it's amazing how free it sounds. Yeah. It reminds me, my favorite form of poetry is iambic pentameter, which is 10 beats per line. So you say, my friend is coming, my friend is coming over here today. That's 10 lines. And then the next line is 10. And you can sometimes add an 11th beat, which is called a breath. Shakespeare did it in to be or not to be. That is the question. Uh, and Chaucer was like captain of iambic pentameter. But Chaucer? One of my, Chaucer? Jeffrey Chaucer? Jeffrey Chaucer. The writer? One of my favorite things about writing an iambic pentameter is that the structure releases a creativity that wouldn't otherwise be. It's one of my favorite things to talk about in art how it's one of the great um, uh, evidences that structure will release creativity when it feels maybe it's prohibitive, it does the opposite. And I think that's exactly what happens here. Yeah. These structures that inherently feel prohibitive at first, once applied and, and learned, become freeing. Yeah. And that's what we get to hear. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. It was, it was crazy I, while listening to her and her adding stuff. I, you could just recollect all the stuff we've heard and yeah. people doing it. And when, it was also reminiscent of uh, the wonderful conversation we got to have with uh, the Miss Chakraborty. Yes. Uh, who was just a encyclopedia of oh, man. information and, and intellect. Uh, if you haven't seen that interview, go please, please do. Please just go it's a watch it. Beautiful that. interview. She's we, so so not for us because we didn't get to talk much because she was just such a uh, 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 like I said an encyclopedia of information. Yes. yes. It was lovely. Uh, loved talking to her. But yeah, she uh, phenomenal job. The difficulty level too. <sighs> to go backwards mm -hmm. to hit the notes that she hit, whether it was a five, a six, or a seven, whatever it is. I was listening to the specificity with which she has to hit those notes as she returns. And she didn't just hit the notes, she hit the embellishments, the ornaments. Yeah. It, that is so freaking hard. I can't even begin to tell you guys, she made it look so easy. That takes years of training. Years and years of training and, and pretty much needing to have 
pretty close to perfect pitch. Yeah, I was also reminded of our lovely uh, friend who sang for us. For, yes, for I was too. As well, uh, who was lovely. Beautiful. If you're watching, love you. You did yes, a phenomenal magnificent job. Magnificent job. But this was great. Oh. Uh, I, I feel like we, we can now understand it and appreciate it even more than we already do. And yeah, we appreciated it quite, quite a bit. Yeah, I love knowing this. So if there's more informational videos, you know we love reacting to stuff like this too. Yeah. So we can understand the art form even teach, more. Teach us more. And he's a teacher, so. Yeah. He's a bitch for teaching. Yeah. <laughs> Da din din 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 da din din